All right, we're going to talk about powers of 10 and scientific notation. All right, so let's start when we're multiplying by powers of 10. And powers of 10 just means anything with a 1 with zeros after it, okay? So our only rule is that it's getting bigger. We're multiplying. Um, that out of the way. Um, and so we want to make the number bigger. If it's a whole number, like 35, we're adding zeros to it. Okay, so if I do 35 times 10, for every zero in there, I'm going to add a zero to the 35. So it becomes 350. Okay, if the decimal place is in there, all it's going to do, it's not going to add a zero to it because this number is the same as that one, so that's not the answer. I'm going to slide my decimal point one to the right for every zero this, there is. So in this case, I'm going to get 7.5. Okay. That's actually what I was doing over here at 35, because if you think about it, the decimal point's right there, and I'm sliding it one to the right, but I had to fill something in, so that's where that zero came from, okay? So the rule when I'm multiplying by a power of 10 is that for every zero, move the decimal point one to the right. Move the decimal One place to the right. Now, if you're worried, you're not going to remember whether you need to move right or left. The main thing is, remember, you're multiplying, so the number should be bigger than it was before. 0.75, now it's 7.5, so that's bigger. 35, now it's 350, so that's bigger. Okay. So let's look at these other examples. I still have 35. This time, I'm moving it four places. So again, it starts right after that one's place. So if I move it four places, that's just going to add four extra zeros onto it and become 350,000. Same for this one. Again, four zeros. I'm going to move it four times. The first two times I'm moving it, I'm having to get the decimal point past the actual numbers that were there, the seven and the five. And then I'm going to move it two more times. So that means I'm going to fill in two placeholder zeros. So my number is now 7,500. Okay. So remember, you're moving the decimal point. And then once you get past the actual numbers, that's when you start adding in your zeros. Okay. Now sometimes you'll see the power of 10 written as an actual power. Okay. That 7 is how many zeros there are. So that's how many places I'm moving it. I'm going to move this 7 times, however many that is. Okay. So in this case, that's pretty easy because all that means is I need the 35 and then make sure I add on 7 zeros. Okay. 350 million. So seven zeros. Over here on this one, I'm still moving it seven places. But remember, two of those are going to be to get past the seven and the five. So I move it twice then, and that means I have five more times to move it. So that means for this one, I'm only going to add five zeros. Because the first two zeros were used to slide the decimal point past the seven and the five. Okay. So that's how the shortcut for multiplying by a power of 10. For every zero, move the decimal place one to the right. Okay. Now, as you might guess, if I'm dividing by a power of 10, it's just going to move the other direction. Okay. So on this first one, I still have a decimal point right there after the 5. If I'm dividing by 10, by 1, 0, I'm going to move my decimal point once, but this time I'm going to move it to the left. Okay, so it becomes 3.5. Because I'm dividing, my number should be smaller after I divide. Okay, so the rule now is move decimal point one place to the left. Or each zero. Just like I said last time, if you get mixed up, am I moving to the right or am I moving to the left, just think about what's happening. If it's multiplying, your number should be getting bigger. If you're dividing, your number should be getting smaller. So in this example right here, I have one zero. I'm going to slide it one to the left, which is going to give me 0 0.075, which is less than 0.75. Okay, so make sure your number is getting smaller. This time I have four zeros. Again, the decimal point was right by that 5 after the 1's place. I'm going to slide it 1, 2, 3, 4. 
Okay, this is similar to the last one where I was moving the decimal and had to fill in filler zeros. Okay, so my decimal point's right here. I need two filler zeros. Be careful, some people just start putting a decimal point and put as many zeros as there were here. But remember, two of those are used to move past the three and the five, okay? Over here we have one, two, three, four. I'm gonna slide it one, two, three, four. And that's gonna leave me with four zeros before I get to the seven and the five. And then finally, just like last time, that seven is rep representing seven zeros. So I'm gonna slide it once, twice, and then I still have five more. <laughs> Can't even fit it. But that means there's gonna be five zeros. Not seven zeros, because the first two were used to move past the three and the five, okay? But over here, when I'm moving seven times, there actually will be seven zeros, because I'm already past the numbers, so I just need to move seven times, okay? So I'm just gonna have seven zeros, because I didn't have to move past the seven and the five. The decimal point was already past the seven and the five. So that's the rule for dividing by powers of 10. Okay. So when I'm multiplying, I'm moving one to the right to make it bigger for each zero. For dividing, I'm moving it one to the left for each zero to make it smaller. So this is also helpful when you're talking about scientific notation. Okay. So scientific notation is just a way to write really, really big numbers or really small numbers. And it's scientific notation because scientists use it a lot. Um, if you're talking about things in space, those numbers get big very quickly. Things are very far apart from each other. Um, if you're talking about studying um, atoms or little molecules, those are very, very small. So those numbers are very, very small. So instead of having to write out maybe 20 zeros or 40 zeros to represent something, they came up with this notation to make it easier to represent. Okay. So what you need to do is you need to take whatever your number is. So here's a really big number, 45 million. And you want to find where you can move the decimal point, so our decimal point is starting right here, you're going to start moving it until you get to a point where the decimal point gives us a number between 0 and 10. Okay, so it needs to be bigger than 0 but less than 10. Okay, so a number between 0 and 10. Okay, so basically a one digit number. So I couldn't stop here because that would give me 45. That's too big. I need to go one more. And so now I have 4.5. So my number is 4.5. And then you show it multiplying by a power of 10. And the power is how many times you moved, right? I moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. So 4.5 times 10 to the 7. Those two things are equal to each other. This is just going backwards from what I was doing on the last page, okay? I can go forwards again, because remember how we turn 4.5 into its normal number when there's a power of 10 is however many numbers are in the exponent is how many times you move it, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And you put zeros in for all those places we just moved in. So that would be 45 million, just like I did over on the right side, okay? So that is equal to each other. So the scientific notation, let me erase my little check here because I was just checking that we did correctly, is 4.5 times 10 to the 7 for 45 million. Same thing works for really small numbers. We're still going to slide the decimal, okay? So I'm sliding it until I get a number between 0 and 10. So that would be right there, 8.2. And I still want to count how many times I moved it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? And what we learned on the last page is that you can show it dividing 10 to the power of 6, right? Because it's getting smaller, right? It's a small number it was dividing. But scientific notation doesn't show it as dividing. It's always multiplication. The way they show that the number is a smaller number is they make the exponent negative. Okay, so anytime you see an exponent that's negative, that means it's a really small number, a decimal, okay? So your answer should be a decimal number. If it's a 
decimal, you'll have a negative, and if it's a negative, it should be a decimal, vice versa, okay? So small number is decimal, okay? And it's negative. If it's positive, then that means it's a large number, okay, a large number. And that's scientific notation.